blows his required fields and um, now I'm going to be doing a video uh, similar to what I did a few months back with um, some of the albums that I've been uh, spinning as of late. Um, this isn't, this uh, video doesn't include everything um, but uh, it includes a handful of videos, but, uh, the albums that I've been spinning as of late. First I'd like to thank uh, Scott Waters from No Life Till, uh, no Life Till Metal. Um, mentioned him last year and, and uh, thanked him for viewing a, a few uh, albums that he sent to him. I sent him a bundle of a few albums earlier this uh, year and he uh, reviewed that and he uh, gave a show to my channel. just want to say thank you. And um, anyways, uh, let's get going here. I'm going to start off with Vector. This is their new album, Terminal Redux. And uh, this is their third album by Vector and they are a progressive thrash metal band. Um, and they've always had a bit of a sci-fi bent to their lyrics. And this is their first concept album about um, an astronaut, um, a military astronaut, who finds um, um, uh, okay, uh, okay, molecules that help uh, restore uh, uh, life uh, and um, uh, restore order in the war-torn planets in space. And um, the album is um, uh, has uh, ten songs and is um, uh, and uh, is uh, about seventy. Three minutes long, and um, including a closer tra a clothing tracker, Charge the Void, which is over 13 and a half minutes long. And um, I've always enjoyed Vector, a progressive thrash metal band with a slight black metal influence towards the vocals. And um, this is uh, um, the third album, first in five years, and it's a concept album, uh, the first concept album. And um, while it doesn't um, uh, to, uh, it's a plan Operation Mind Crime for my favorite concept album of all time. Nor does it actually re uh, replace um, Sabat uh, 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 or Sabat um, uh, Dreamweaver for the greatest thra uh, thrash metal uh, album, uh, thrash metal concept album of all time. It's still an enjoyable listen. This is a Russian thrash metal band here called Shaw, and this is their album Escape from Mind. Uh, Shaw is a Russian thrash metal band, and they're the first one who uh, who actually sang in English back when they uh, formed in the 1980s. And uh, earlier this year, um, um, they actually had um, Stormspell Records actually had a 500 copy limited edition uh, of this uh, album. Uh, it's influenced by the Bay Area of thrash, but the vocals are very strange on it. Um, I guess my uh, and also there's a really neat effect that actually uh, comes with uh, the album as well. Uh, actually, um, you can see it kind of bit of a neat effect that actually came with it. I had no idea that uh, it actually uh, came in front of the uh, booklet, but um, pretty neat. And uh, the music is enjoyable. Uh, cult thrash metal band. This uh, this was uh, limited to 500 copies, and I have. This one right here, and um, uh, it, it was actually taken from a demo the band had recorded in 1988 before having their first uh, official uh, full length album released the following year. Although there were some changes, there were a few songs that were replaced and a few songs that were changed uh, somewhat, but it's an, uh, it's an enjoyable uh, uh, album, and this is the first time it's been officially pressed on CD. Uh, when it first came out in the early 90s, and uh, it didn't get an official CD release. This is Gorod, and this is a maze of recycled creed. This is a, um, a progressive thrash metal band from France, and um, they, I saw them live earlier this year um, in Halifax when they played with Beyond Creation. Um, uh, and I actually got to um, um, meet um, uh, Benoit, um, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, band members, Benoit Klaus, the bassist. And um, I got to meet uh, three to four members of Beyond Creation as well. And uh, this is a enjoyable um, uh, progressive thrash, uh, progressive death metal, not thrash metal. Uh, uh, I was talking about this thrash uh, earlier of Shaw and Vector, but this is uh, progressive death metal. And uh, my favorite track here would be Inner Alchemy, which even had a music video made for it. And um, this is released in Unique Leader Records. And a bit of a funny bit of trivia for you. Uh, I actually pointed this out when I actually uh, met uh, Benoit. Um, there was, uh, this band was originally called Gorgasm uh, back when, uh, when they released their first album in the early 2000s. But they then changed their name because of the um, American um, death metal band also called Gorgasm. And uh, then they, uh, they re-released that first album under the Gorod name. 
to avoid uh, fans of the other orgasm from um, uh, uh, getting the, uh, uh, confused. And um, and what, what's kind of funny is that they're on Unique Leader Records, and um, the American Band Gorgasm actually used to be on that label, um, releasing um, uh, their album Masticate to Dominate on that record label in the early 2000s. Um, uh, either way, it's kind of funny considering they used to be on the label, and um, uh, and these guys uh, who, had, who used to be called Gorgasm are now on that label. It's kind of, it's kind of funny when you think about it. This is Baron Rocco. Um, I, I heard the name pronounced Baron Rojo before, but in the booklet, when I was looking at it, it says something about it being pronounced Baron Rocco. Um, just gonna actually uh, open the booklet here. Pronounced Rocco, it says. That's what they say. But I heard it pronounced Rojo in a Spanish interview with the band. They didn't really correct it, but. Um, However you say it, this is their album, Volumen Brutal. I discussed this band when I actually uh, uh, was in my um, uh, acquisitions video back in March, actually, when I bought their album, Metal Morphosis. This is Volumen Brutal, and uh, as I stated there, Lars Ulrich of Metallica actually stated this is one of his favorite uh, albums uh, in uh, the 80s. And um, also, um, I mentioned uh, Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden, actually, um, um, Helping translate it, he actually um, didn't do do too uh, much of the actual translation. Apparently, according to this, uh, they had some help with it, but it wasn't uh, the uh, only uh, help they got. But uh, he provided help with them, and due to their ties with Iron Maiden, and um, uh, the, the band is actually even though they're from Spain, they actually got uh, mislabeled as being in the NWOBHM, um, but they do absolutely have that kind of sound. Um, that, uh, if you like the NWOBHM of the uh, uh, 80s, um, of the early uh, 1980s, you should definitely uh, like uh, Volumen Brutal. And uh, another album that actually always kind of fit that bill, I've always thought, was uh, the American band Riot and around album Fire Down Under. Totally could have, uh, it totally fits in perfectly with the NWOBHM movement at the time. This is Artillery, and this is around album Penalty by Perception. This was released earlier this year and is a new album. Now, Artillery is a thrash metal band from Denmark, and they've always been one of the uh, most um, uh, uh, unique sounding bands uh, in a style. They've always had a, an original feel to them. Um, there are many thrash metal bands that sound like Metallica or sound like Slayer or sound like Testament, but I can't think of any band who I'd say sounds exactly like Artillery. They're, they've always been one of the most distinctive bands in the thrash metal field. And they've always used, uh, they've, ever since the uh, their 1990 album uh, by Inheritance, they've regularly utilized Middle Eastern type melodies, and um, and even uh, the unusual vocal stylings of um, uh, Fleming Ronsdorf. Um, I think that's how you say his name on the uh, uh, the original vocalist in the first few albums. Also gave the band a very unique flavor uh, to them because he he has a very unusual vocal style. He's not the vocalist in the last few albums. He doesn't sing in this album either. Um, the vocals on the newer albums are cleaner and um, but the music is still good and um, this isn't their best album. I think 1987's Terror Squad and 1990's Behind, uh, be, sorry, be, By Inheritance are their um, best albums but this is uh, another enjoyable album and um, there's at least I put this ahead of at least uh, a couple of their albums. It's an enjoyable uh, album overall. And this is Hex, and this is um, uh, a two-album box set with their albums Under uh, the Spell and No Escape. Well, Under the Spell is the main album. It's the 30th anniversary um, uh, of the, that album that Metal Blade put out. Uh, it also includes a No Escape album, as well as some bonus demo tracks and a lot a live DVD that I actually haven't watched yet. But um, um, under the Spell is the main album that, it, uh, is, that this has on it, but I think I actually prefer No Escape between the two albums. But the band overall plays uh, enjoyable traditional metal um, in the vein of Metal Church uh, and, uh, and Sirens Era Sabotage would be some good comparison points. If you like that uh, kind of sound, you'll, uh, as well as very early Hellstar, if you like those bands, you should definitely check out uh, this box set. After this, Hex actually changed their sound. We went to an extreme metal direction.